Okay, in this video, we have to cover a concept known as co-transport. If you notice in this particular diagram, I did put the word passive transport, which is diffusion osmosis, uh, active transport, bulk transport. In no space did I mention anything about co-transport at all. Uh, the reason why I did not mention this is because you will only see examples of co-transport in chapter 7, plant transport, and chapter 14, homeostasis. But I do want to cover it a little bit, so I just want you to be familiar with what co-transport is all about. You don't need to memorize it, but it helps us um, understand chapter 7 and 14 in the future. Okay, And it's good to also realize that such transport proteins exist. Now, co-transport is a movement across the cell membrane where it requires a transport protein and it transports usually two substances simultaneously. For example, you can see the phospholipid bilayer and you can also see the transport protein. And in this case, the transport protein is a hydrogen ion sucrose co-transporter. What that means is this protein is able to transport hydrogen ion and sucrose at the same time, by the way. So I'm going to represent hydrogen ions as red dots and I'm going to represent sucrose as triangles, green triangles. Now, notice something quite interesting. The concentration of hydrogen ion on one side is higher than the other side and the concentration of sucrose on one side is higher than the other side. You can see the difference in the concentration gradient. Now, when you see the word hydrogen ion sucrose co-transporter, I want you to focus on the first particle, which I've highlighted. In this case, it is hydrogen ion. You must just focus on the concentration gradient of the hydrogen ion in this case. Now, what do I mean by this? It means that in area A, it has a higher hydrogen ion concentration and area B has a lower hydrogen ion concentration. What will happen is here, one hydrogen ion will diffuse through the co-transporter. But when it does so, it will automatically pull in the sucrose molecule effortlessly. So the hydrogen ion that diffuses through will also be accompanied by one sucrose at the same time. So as hydrogen ion diffuses down the concentration gradient, sucrose will follow. Now, even though sucrose is actually moving from a low concentration of sucrose to high concentration of sucrose, it, you might be thinking, oh, that, that is active transport. No, in this case, no ATP is expended at all. No ATP is spent by the cell to move the sucrose because the sucrose accompany the hydrogen ion. That is what is quite interesting to know about co-transport in a nutshell. There are also specific examples where, um, and if you were to do a bit of extra reading on co-transport, there is something called symports and also antipods. You do not need to memorize them for the exam. These are all just extra bits of information, okay? So you do not need to know co-transport in detail. What I just want you to understand about co-transport is the fact that there are transport proteins that can transport two substances simultaneously, but they will just follow the concentration gradient of one of the particle. In this case, in the hydrogen ion sucrose co-transporter, it only follows the concentration gradient of hydrogen ions. So every time a hydrogen ion diffuses through it down the concentration gradient, a sucrose molecule automatically follows and no ATP is spent whatsoever. 